Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. I'm excited. We have James Riley, and his new middle grade novel is called Story Thieves. Have you ever wanted to jump into a book and be a part of it? James, welcome to Anderson's and Naperville. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. Yeah, so Story Thieves. Yes. What a fun book. Thank you so much. I'm yeah. really excited to see what people think. Yeah. So I know you did some schools with yes. us today. So tell us a little about those because I'm, I'm always curious about, you know, when, when you go to a school environment, it's a little different when you're doing a store event or, or mm -hmm. something else. So how, how did it go today? The schools were amazing today. Yeah. I went to Patterson Elementary and Droughton Elementary. Right. Uh, yeah. Is that the correct Droughton name? Point. Droughton yeah. Point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. So I went to Patterson Elementary and Droughton Point Elementary, yeah. and Droughton just treated me like such a rock star. Oh, I came good. in and there was a, a, a greeting committee, and they walked me into the library where there was like a reception. There was, uh, there was water, there were cookies, there were brownies. And I, I saw some books to be signed, and I was like, oh, that's a great amount of books. And they're like, no, no, those are the kids who couldn't come. And the kids who started to come in, the line was out the library. They all wanted oh, to, so to cool. meet me and to read the books. I was so excited. Yeah. I've never seen a school come out like this, uh, just to read. That's great. That's and I have, great. I have a niece and nephew at Patterson. So yeah. they were very excited to come yeah. and they introduced me at, at the school. Uh, and it was, the kids were so excited. There were, again, so many books to sign, which yeah. is always nice to see. <laughs> that's um, great. Yeah. Think about school visits, it's just you never see so much excitement right. because we're always just sitting in front of our computers typing. Sure. And it's such a like, it can be a solitary experience. Uh, and to see like readers excited about reading yeah. and to, yeah. to ask you questions about the books yeah. always just fills me with such yeah. like excitement. Yeah. I don't know. So with Story Thieves, it's, mm -hmm. it's technically only been out like three or four days, right? <laughs> yep. I mean, so... And some of them had read it, which was amazing. Well, and, and, and that's what we try and do with the school because I, I think there's, you know, you're coming you know, mm -hmm. we have to be prepared. You know, this is exciting. So, you know, we, we really encourage, you know, the educators and the kids to be ready. But it, only three day, three or four days now. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Thank you very but, much. But how does it feel with this book? And, and obviously you've gotten some great feedback so far. So Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I'd had a, a previous series, right. Half Upon a Time, right. uh, Twice Upon a Time and Once Upon the End. So weirdly, I felt like I had had a little experience with publishing. Yeah, and I right. feel like nobody actually has any experience with publishing sometimes. <laughs> But like starting over with Story Thieves was kind of like I had a first book out for the first time ever. Yeah. Like, you know, it's so easy when you have a series and, and people are coming back and you've got fans who are looking forward to it. But this was new characters, new story, and kind of a, mm -hmm. a strange high concept story for yeah. me. Yeah. So it's the concept is that Bethany, who's one of the main characters, is half fictional. She can jump into books because her father is a fictional character, so she's sort of... Uh, crosses the worlds, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and her father's been missing since she was four. So she's looking through all the books in her library, trying to find yeah. them. For four years, she's been looking. Right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. and and her classmate actually sees her coming out of a book, so he gets a little freaked out for obvious reasons right. when she see he sees her hand popping out of a page, but he he gets to live the dream, which is always my dream, which is what if I get to go in my favorite series ever? Yeah. Um, and, and she's crawling out of Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Yes. <laughs> Which is, what a great book to crawl out if of, If you're right? going to jump into a book and be able to live it out and get to explore a chocolate factory. And hung out with Oompa Loompas, right? Yeah. That would oh, yeah. be so cool. <laughs> it's a little bad because you're stealing chocolate. Yeah. But yeah. I think there's enough chocolate to go around. Okay. So where, where, did, where did the little seed start to grow? Where did you come up with this? Because this, I love this concept of it. Because Thank you. Because we all dream of this. When we're yeah. reading a book we love and we love the characters, you think about what... I would love to be in that world, at least be a fly on the wall, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's sort of, it, yeah. it's, it went back to my, my childhood of wanting to, like, I used to read a lot of fantasy books, and I would read a lot of books. Uh, Alfred Sloat was one of my favorite authors. Oh, okay. He wrote stuff like My Robot Buddy, where you had a, ro a robot that looked exactly like you. Right. And I used to just dream about that. Because they got in so much trouble just looking. Yeah, that's right. That's it was like right. they were twins, and that was sort of the only difference. But that, and other than one being a robot, but it was like that would have been so much fun yeah. to have an identical best friend who could have all kinds of adventures with you. I used to think about that, and I'd love to just live in a world where that was possible, yeah. or where you could learn magic. That's been a goal of my life for my entire <laughs> life. It's probably not going to happen yet, yeah. but uh, if I could jump into Hogwarts or something and just. Take, take like adult classes or night school, you know, <laughs> online courses maybe. Yeah, right. Uh, just to be able to join sure, some of these sure. fantasy worlds. So that it's always been kind of a dream of mine. And I, I, for whatever reason, I never connected with, oh, I could write a book about that. Yeah. Because that would cause a lot of trouble if you actually did that. That sure. might be an interesting story. Yeah. 
Yeah. So hopefully it will be. So so you know your first series and now in this book and I'm 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 hoping this is going to be there's going to be another one. Yes. 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 Okay. I'm good. Writing good. the second one right now. All right. Yes. So so what how, what got you into writing for kids and and especially you know the middle grade or a little you know a little mm -hmm. higher? What made you want to write for kids? Because I think what you've done with taking fracturing fairy tales and doing that with your first series and now this one is taking well-known pieces of literature and <laughs> letting us go in out of these stories and everything mm -hmm. you know they're, they're it's really really fun thank you yeah. uh i i found i like children's literature because it has less of a cynicism than adult literature mm -hmm. like as we grow older we sort of we feel the need to put up walls and we feel the need to uh kind of just give a kind of rolling eyes approach yeah. toward life where it's like, okay, I get that that's sentimental or I get that there are notions of good versus evil or heroism, but you know, there's always, you can always take down your heroes. Right. You can always find some kind of feet of clay. Uh, but for kids, and I, I kind of view it more as for all ages who are looking for something a little sort of more pure, that they, they, they don't have to examine quite so cynically. Right. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like you can tell kind of these more kind of classic stories a little bit. Like so much of our classic literature could be considered kids literature because sure. it's just sort of appropriate for anybody. Uh, and it's got these kind of timeless ideas behind it that, that make its core. Uh, yeah. So I kind of thought of it that way rather than yeah. writing for kids. I was writing for myself and maybe yeah. I'm just immature. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> well, I loved it too. And I know there's a lot of other Thank adults you. who loved it too. You know, so Bethany, you know, yes. she's, her, she's, she's um, half her, her dad's fictional her mom mm -hmm. is real you know and, and thinking about is she is she a composite of anybody or even a composite of other characters from from books or, or is it something that you created I, maybe not conscious of something like that Bethany kind of surprised me as I was writing her because I expected to be um, I expected to be writing kind of this fictional risky kind of uh, happy-go-lucky character, right. kind of a little bit more how uh, Kiel Nomenfoot turns out in the book. Right. But as it turned out, she turned into this very responsible, I have very certain rules w w that I will follow when I go into books and they, they never change right. and I cannot let anyone find out about this. I've already caused enough trouble in my life by uh, she lost her father, literally. She pulled him into a book when she was four right. and he didn't come back out as she did. So she feels right. guilt and yeah. I, I've never really written characters that feel such guilt and so with such responsibility, yeah. it's it's almost a Peter Parker kind of character. Right, right, yeah. Uh, which yeah. I, I love comics, and I've been reading comics my okay. whole life. Okay. So there's very much a possibility little, little, little that... A little Peter Parker in her, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And Owen, you know, is he a little you? Owen's totally me, <laughs> including okay. making all the mistakes, including thinking like, right. oh, I can go save uh, the Magister. There's a Dumbledore-type character right. yeah. who gets uh, put into some danger, and so... Owen figures, why can't I go save him? I'll be a hero to the entire world. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't turn out. Yeah. yeah. But, but I like the way, you know, you're going into a book, and if you change the plot, this can have, you know, severe consequences. It's sort of like when you think of time travel, mm -hmm. and you mess with time, the whole yes. time continuum gets messed up, you know? It's sort of, but exactly. it's, sort of like, it's sort of like jumping into a story, and, and if you mess it up, ooh, there, something could there really nasty could happen, right? Vast consequences, yes. Vast consequences, which is... I think kids could just go crazy thinking about the possibilities of jumping into a story and changing something, whether they liked it or not. You exactly. Know? Yeah. yeah. I never, I never thought about it. So they, <laughs> they didn't like the ending of yeah, or something. Right, that's that's right, fun. Right. I'm gonna have to think about that myself. But you know, but, but you know, this is has so many things for readers because it, it has a little. You have some fantasy in there. You got some. Mm -hmm. You got an evil scientist, which is always good, and and then it's also it's. I think it's sort of you're adding stories that they know or but the one story I just love that you know the one that this is you know it's the Kiel Nomen foot right you surprised me where did you come up with that because I love the name for for one thing and I have no but idea. this is Owen's <laughs> favorite series you mm -hmm. know so where did you come up with this 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 series you know it's fictional but this you know. was my idea of in in the story thieves universe this is somebody who saw Harry Potter and was like I can write that Ah. So much like me. So he wrote he wrote a seven book series about a fictional magic thief who gets pulled into this war between two worlds, a magical world and a war a world of science. Yeah. Uh, and the science world just doesn't approve of the magic world and and wants it kind of wiped out. Or at least some people, the evil scientists do. Yeah. Right. Uh, and which is headed by a man named Dr. Verity. I love and that name. Thank Dr. You. Verity. That was These names just sort of popped out. I, I honestly, I wish I could take credit for them being fun, but like Kiel Nomenfoot, I have no idea where that came but from. Kiel, yeah, it was just, but it just great. implies kind yeah. of kids' literature to me. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so they, they got to, I, I loved coming up with, I actually plotted out all seven Kiel Noman Foot books. So that Did I you could, really? I could make references and I, I gave them all a uh, specific title so I could reference them in the book. But they all have fun plots where they actually find okay. each key because the plot is that they're looking for these keys to unlock mm -hmm. the source of magic and hopefully stop the evil Quantarium uh, planet of scientists. Uh, but yeah, that was part of the, like that was maybe some of the most fun I've had writing was yeah. <laughs> plotting out fake Harry <laughs> Potter ripoff <laughs> fantasy books that got to involve all this crazy science fiction too. Yeah. It was like... Every, that's the beauty of story these. I can do whatever I want right. and make up all these other stories. But it's stories within stories within stories. And that's what I thought because it's, it's sort of like a gift box, you know, and you I, open yeah. it up and something fun inside. I so hope it's really... fun. <laughs> <laughs> the second book is uh, mystery oriented with okay. the great, great, great grandson of Sherlock Holmes and the great, great, great granddaughter of Professor Moriarty. Uh, oh, okay. And you don't want to show a Sherlock Holmes character potentially that you may be different or half fictional in a way mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they are very observant and they may figure things out from that. Oh. So things go very wrong when yeah. Bethany might be looking for help, looking for her father who's yeah. still missing. Yeah. So, but that's, I got to do a mystery book, yeah. which I've never written and I probably never would just kind of write a mystery book, yeah. but I got to take in all these kind of classic mystery cliches, which yeah. is what I love playing with. <laughs> just like the plot holes and all kinds of stuff yeah yeah no it's so fun but i, I loved in this book too it was it was the fa fantasy versus science yes i mean how many times do you ever see a battle between fantasy and science but they're so i mean it yeah. makes total sense and yeah. then oh right. I, I won't give it away <laughs> no 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 we don't want to do any spoilers i was like read and then that's one. how it ends <laughs> yeah right right, right. but that's i so excited but with dr the word verity was so good with with all that you know science versus science but it's, is truth yeah that's right it's so it's okay um so I love the twist, and I don't want to give too much away either, okay. too. But when 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 Owen goes in there, he kind of he kind of messes things up, mm -hmm. and Doctor Verity decides, you know, it's sort of like um, characters can kind of have the revenge on the writer on the outside world. Yes. So we, I don't. But did you ever think of what your characters could do to you? <laughs> yes, and which is why the there's an apology as the dedication to the book, which is I'm so sorry, I'm so so sorry to my fictional characters. Yeah. Because I put them through terrible things, yeah. and I don't want them yeah. coming after me. Yeah. Because but see that, but the, your imagination can think, oh, what would they do? Oh yeah. And if they, I got pulled into the story, what would happen to me? What if they found out that I had written about them? That's right. terrifying, and that yeah. may come into the second book. I know. A little that bit. That would be really, really cool. You know, some of this reminded me a little little bit of uh, Cornelia Funka's ink heart yes. a little bit and and getting pulled into a story mm -hmm. and being trapped in there and um, that was a little bit darker though than this this I thought was a little fun so I wanted to know you know with this the, the plotting and the pace and the adventure and the humor mm -hmm. I always find that balance so hard D did you find it hard to craft it and to make it that way because it, it reads so easily you know um, I, it's it is difficult and it's always it always comes down to the editing process for me yeah. uh, because there's always too much or there's too little sure. of something. Mm -hmm. Some of it is moving things around and I was really lucky because I was there these t the story thieves itself takes place in sort of alternate worlds in the fictional world and the re the real world. So I could sort of balance one versus the other if I needed to and kind of go back and forth so have some right. action in one and have a slower scene in the other. So that helped a little bit, but uh, a lot of a lot of what I feel like kids are used to now is movies and video games and right. things like that. So I do go, I try to just keep their attention a little more with a lot more action than I might have normally. Yeah, uh, I just find it kind of moves things along, sure. and I can sneak in deeper ideas. Maybe the the ones that sort of I'm I really want to play with and kind of just yeah. sneak in a little bit, get in under the radar, and maybe they they'll. They'll pick up on it as they're enjoying themselves. Right, 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 right. You had so many great supporting characters Thank in, you. in this. And and they a lot of them made it fun, really fun. Is there one that particularly stands out for you and I, that was your favorite? I Keel surprised me because okay. I I meant for Keel to be this arrogant, not not he was a Harry Potter ripoff in a right. lot of ways, which they mentioned in the book. But he's also he's like a confident one and he's he's always winking and thinking he's going to, he's he's got this handled. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the fact that he still ended up kind of charming and and like giving to his friends really kind of endeared me to him, which yeah. is weird to say, but it's true. I, I found myself coming on, around and I won't give it away, but there's there's a reason the end happened the way it did. Okay. Uh, okay. In terms of Keel, uh, but I really like Charm, who is a, a part of Keel's book as well. She's half robot, 
she was in a bad accident, so she was sort of recreated. Mm -hmm. She's a cyborg kind of thing, uh, and she's she's all science. She she knows everything. She's a genius, uh, but she she has no time for any kind of shenanigans or anything. Yeah. She just wants to get things done. Keel is always irritating her. Uh, she kind of won my heart a little bit too. Yeah. And some other people, and I've heard from some people who've read it a little bit early, they're like, Charm's coming back for book two, right? And I yeah. was like, I can't say. You can't say. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but, I, but, that's... but see, that's why it's so interesting to hear kids talk to you about this. Exactly. Because they're going to give you, you know, you're going to realize, oh, maybe I got to do that in, my, in the next one. The and, feedback yeah. is amazing when, because yeah. they're, it's completely honest whenever a kid is telling you their sure. opinion. They sure. will tell you exactly what they think, yeah. whether it's bad yeah. or good. And they, but it's, it's exactly, it's yeah. their opinion and it's great to hear and you get feedback and it's like, oh, maybe I could include John. Yeah. Yeah. So in Story Thieves, mention mm -hmm. a few of the books that, you know, of course you said at the school today they had hands coming up. <laughs> Some of the they did. Books, or even the ones that you you reference to in sort of a, a, a similar type of, of book or genre. Sure. Yeah. So there's, there's obviously references to Harry Potter all over the place, right. uh, to Rick Riordan books. I, I, I tried to balance it between uh books that that kids will will be in love with and and think about when they're thinking about books they would want to jump into right. and then i had things like charlie and the chocolate factory and alice in wonderland uh charlie and the chocolate factory is clearly something we'd all love to go right. into sure alice in wonderland i actually included because it's it's the same kind of story it's about a girl who goes into a a crazy fictional kind of world whether it's a dream whether it's not whether she goes through the looking glass or just falls asleep or down the rabbit hole uh there are questions of whether <laughs> through the looking glass is wonderland or not i'm right. still not clear on that yeah right. it uh, takes a lot of people yeah out. yeah right but yeah. so I, I wanted to bring kind of references to that to sort of imply sure. that there is a larger world that maybe alice was real yeah. and went into the fictional world at some point that there, there might be some history coming out later in the series so there there were little kind yeah. of things that i i put in to reference later yeah. uh and then some of my favorite books I mentioned Fable Haven in there because that's that's one recently. Yeah, yeah and now right? I get to go on tour with Brandon. Yeah, yeah. So it looks so, really good. I know, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> with Brandon Moe, that's cool. Exactly. But, you know, I I think this the, the, the possibilities and the fun are sort of endless of what you could do with this. I'm really excited. Yeah. I want to do, there's so many different kinds yeah. of genres I want to play with and, like, yeah. places I want, and, and, like, fictional books I can make up that yeah. have them meet the characters. And yeah. it's something that never would have occurred to me but my editor was pointing out uh, there could be like spin-off series where I could actually write these books, and that blows my mind that I could yeah. I could oh, have my Keel. characters meet them. Oh my gosh. Keel or the the people in the second book, yeah. which I don't want to talk too much about. Yeah, okay. But okay. it could be so much fun, and I can have the story thieves character go into my previous series and meet them. And there are yeah. so many possibilities there yeah. that I mean I, I I wouldn't want to get too crazy because I don't want people to have to read the first series, and right, I would love sure. for them to. Yeah. But I don't want yeah. to feel like it's a requirement. Yeah. But I could just do it as like a, a little one-off chapter or something just yeah. for fun. Well, you know, talking about that first day is half upon a time, you mm -hmm. know, and you talk about Jack and Mary and everything. And and there you're sort of retelling, you're fracturing, you're twisting, you're mm -hmm. doing two fairy tales or well-known, you know, a lot of different stories that we grew up with and that most people know the basic storyline, you yes. know. And I've always, even from the time, um, it was, it, was it Fractured Fairy Tales on TV? Oh, yeah. It, was it? There was there was like a uh, with mm. Rocky and Bullwinkle was always what that show remember, remember that? but it was mm. people love it when they you take a fairy tale and you change it and there have been so many versions of it and what I can't believe is that the true story of the Theo Pigs is twenty five years old you know and thinking about fractured fairy tales so have you always loved stories like that yes and then when writing that first you know that first trilogy that mm -hmm. first you know set of books it must have been a blast it was so fun because yeah. you. You come in knowing that your audience is going to have this preconceived set of information. Like fairy tales, I always thought of, they're kind of like pop music. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the, the melodies, everyone knows the songs. They're like the Beatles of kind of kids' literature. Yeah. Or, or you just, you, you kind of know them innately. Right. And so if you just make references to things, mm -hmm. you can set up hints that can like trick readers or they can throw them off the scent. You can make, the thing that I had the most fun with was taking a character like the Big Bad Wolf and maybe making him more than one character in several different fairy mm -hmm. tales. So, because he's such a big character and he's got such kind of like a presence in yeah. Little Red Riding Hood, obviously there's like the three pigs, but what if he's the beast in Beauty and the Beast in some way or things like that? I, I found that being able to take one character and make them uh, kind of spread out over several tales right. was a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. Because we all know these stories, so you can, you can 
trick people. Well, you can you tweak can, them. You can kind of insert the same character in different roles. You know? That was so, yeah. that yeah. was ultimately like the fun I had. I, I loved comics growing up and like having a shared universe where characters got in each other's way always seemed like really fun yeah. to me. Yeah. So doing that with fairy tale characters where you know, say Sleeping Beauty got woken up too soon because Cinderella was in the wrong place or you know, Jack and the Beanstalk got chased down. He was he was up stealing from the giant for maybe a different reason than just right. uh, he needed money. Yeah. <laughs> His family right. w didn't have any money. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So it seemed like if you could kind of create a larger world that sure, way, sure. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun. And yeah. it just happened that everyone was kind of doing that. It was like a fairy tale moment in pop culture. Oh, yeah. And but I, but I, think, I think it makes kids' imaginations go crazy of what they can do if they, yes. change, they change things or jump into a story. But I think you could all probably do this with comics. I could imagine going to the Avengers world and doing something or doing whatever you could with DC or Marvel. You know, yes. you could do some really cool things. I may or may not be doing the third book of Story Thieves with some comics references. Ah. It might be a secret origin of certain people. Oh. But I love I the really idea of Owen being like, I know how to get superpowers and then doing yeah. all these dangerous things, which is what gave all these characters superpowers <laughs> right, in the comics. Right. And it's just being terrifying. Yeah, and yeah. never, never something anyone should do. Yeah, but just. Right. <laughs> so, so what is it about fairy tales and those the classic stories that have been told mm. for generations? What is it about those stories that they are timeless? They're forever, and we'd love to retell them and change them and mm -hmm. jump into them. What is it about those stories? Do you think there's some? I mean, we could talk about sort of the the subtext of all the stories mm -hmm. and what they mean and what we could analyze about them. And I think there's so much validity to that, to looking at what Sleeping Beauty might mean to an adult versus a child. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a magic to them when you're a child that you're hearing about, uh, you're hearing about a world where you can walk outside your front door and there's a witch who might be walking down the street and she might have a riddle for you. And if you pass it, you, you might become a king. There's just, there's like right. a, an infinite sort of possibility to that world that I think ignites our imagination a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think as adults, we look at them and see sort of like a, a Jungian kind of, oh, this is what, this, this Cinderella story maybe has these uh, analogies to growing up and sort of exploring who we are and things like that. Uh, but I, I, I think they sort of work on such a multitude mm -hmm. of levels. And I think that they've been around for so long, even before like the Brothers Grimm wrote them down, or, or yeah. Hans Christian Andersen sort of, uh, he made his up. But so yeah. like uh, the, brother, the Brothers Grimm kind of like pulling together all these folk tales that people were telling, and those had kind of uh, ignited something in, in the people that were just telling them orally right. too. Right. I, I think they're just, they're kind of part of our innate yeah. souls right. in some way. Well, in so many cultures, because, mm -hmm. and they've been retold, when you think about all, the, well, we're sitting sort of in the fantasy aisle, <laughs> and you know, on this side, and you think of a lot of those stories are basis for some epic fantasy and science mm -hmm. fiction and just of different stories, not not just for kids, but for adults, you know? Exactly. Yeah. They're kind of like the, the Shakespeare kind of, you can take it and mold it in a variety of different ways right. and have an infinite amount yeah. of stories. These yeah. are like, fantasy, magic, right. infinite possibility. You can do whatever you want with those stories and, and retell them in a variety of ways and it, they always work. Yeah, yeah. Or hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I like the way you're working. <laughs> this is, it's just so much fun. Thank you. So I read that you moved around a lot when you were a kid. Yes. So was that hard? And do you think that experience has, 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 has influenced some of your writing and, and the way you, or maybe just look at the world, maybe? I do. That's actually, that, I've thought about that a lot because when you move around, I was probably going to be a shy kid either way, but I sort of, I, I kind of developed a more inner, a rich inner life mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. I would read a lot more. Uh, I still had friends, but I, I just sort of, I would use my imagination a lot more. Uh, I daydreamed quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Both in school and out, yeah. which I shouldn't be admitting, but uh, that's okay. It's that's good. That's good. <laughs> I'm not getting in trouble now, so it's okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it sort of it made me develop sort of. I, I would tell my own stories to mm -hmm. myself uh, because I did. I moved around like every two years for a while to a variety of different states, um, and so you you do kind of uh, in some ways you, you retreat inside yeah, uh, before right. you meet new people. Yeah. Um, but there's so much inside, and there's so much imagination that you can find and explore. Yeah. yeah. So I read that you had worked at Disney yes. online and yes. then AOL yes. and those things. So did those those experiences influence your writing at all or was it in a different way that, uh, that you ended up in those situations? But maybe, but they had to inform something of what you're doing now. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Disney was always a dream. And so when I got the chance, I jumped and I, yeah. I'm a huge Disney fan. So I, for, for example, with Half a Fun on Time, I knew that 
for a large portion of readers, they're going to know the fairy tales from Disney movies. Yeah. So I try to incorporate both Brothers Grimm references and Disney references yeah, sort of sure. as a whole so that people would kind of know what they're getting into and know what know what I was talking about to, for some kids. <laughs> right. uh, so I, I just always loved Disney animation, kind of the classic animation. I would have loved to be an animator. I can't draw. I'm a terrible, terrible artist or else that would be the field I'd want to go into yeah. because it's storytelling as well. Sure. Uh, sure. And that's... I, I ultimately discovered that storytelling was kind of my love and just whether you write it or whether you draw it, it's all the same. You're yeah. still telling a story. Yeah. Uh, so Disney, Disney was always that to me. It was like... I, I, can't, I can't believe I'm working at this company. Yeah. Uh, and like getting to go through the archives and things like that just gives me yeah. shivers. Oh, I... um, so that, that definitely informed me in that I was already just such a fan and like Disney has informed my entire pop cultural life. Yeah. Um, whereas AOL, I got to write for a lot of teens, which kind of introduced me to a lot of um, YA, middle grade. I kind of found what was popular and I read it and I either liked it or I didn't, but I took... I, I got a sense of what what kids were looking for sure. now, and yeah. it's it's always informative whether you <laughs> it's not for you in any way or right, not. Right, right, uh, sure. But it was fun, and yeah. uh, I got to I wrote a celebrity gossip column. Oh, for fun. whatever reason, <laughs> but it did it did help my sense of humor quite a bit. I because bet that's entirely the joy I got out of it was <laughs> making jokes wherever and puns, terrible, terrible puns. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, besides working on the next book, yes. any any other things you're working on when it comes to, to, to writing? I, I would love to write a YA book. I have a great idea for one that Please I, do. <laughs> I, I need some time to figure out because it's it's like a great world idea and I need okay. a, a story because there's, a world is nothing without a story, obviously. Yeah, right. um, but I think it, it could be really fun. It might be a little, uh, it would definitely be a YA book. Okay. Uh, and then I, I'm really interested in exploring kind of a spin-off idea because I don't feel like that that rarely happens in books, especially yeah. the way I'm trying to do it, which is this is a book in the fictional world. Right. And now it exists. I don't know. Oh, ooh. Yeah. So I, I think that would be a lot of fun. That so would be really fun. There good. may there we'll see. Okay. But story thieves for now. Okay. Can't wait for the next one. Thank okay. you. Okay. So James, I do a little quiz. Okay. okay. This is lightning round, so whatever comes to mind really quick. Okay. Most of them are book related. So yes. you, you know these answers. So whatever comes first. Favorite book when you were a kid? Uh, the Chronicles of Pride in the whole series, but I'll say I'll say Turn Wanderer. Oh, I love that series too. Yeah, and that, that was one especially where he's oh. like going around and finding out who he is. Oh, and he's becoming like a blacksmith. I and so all love that series. You That's... are the first one to mention that of all the people I've interviewed. Yay! Oh. <laughs> love that book. Okay, uh, favorite in high school. You remember anything that stayed with you? Maybe. Ooh, high school. I was reading a ton of fantasy, like David okay. Eddings and Piers okay. Anthony and people like that. David Eddings really informed my okay. sense of humor in terms of writing and characters and stuff. Yeah, he, he does have a lot of humor. In yes, good. and dialogue. Oh, yeah. and the, the interplay between the characters was amazing. Sure. Okay, of a book, all the books you read. Yeah. That, any time in your life, that you, the one book you've been an evangelist for, you could not tell enough people to read. What would that book be? I was pushing Ready Player One pretty oh, hard. Oh, I love that book. Me too. And I was pushing it to non-readers because yeah. I know that like a lot of people who who read have yeah. heard about it or kind of yeah. were in the book world. But it's, like outside, like I was talking to people who played video games, people my age who sort of grew up in the 80s. And I got so many people who were not readers to read it. Yeah. And they were like, I want to read more by this guy. And well, like, he's supposedly writing the sequel. I don't know what's coming out. But I'm Easter like, eggs will Aster. never be the same. Okay, have you ever faked reading a book? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Oh, I'm impressed. I, if you haven't, <laughs> I, I'm I'm a little too honest. I would feel a little too guilty, okay. and okay. I don't mean that in some like no, high no, high roading no, kind no, of way. No, but that's that's it's too much guilt. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. You were having a dinner mm -hmm. with three of your favorite authors, alive or dead. You and three others. Who wow. would those three be? Uh, I would love to talk to Lloyd Alexander, Alfred mm -hmm. E. Sloat, who wrote uh, My Robot Buddy and a number of other things when I was a kid, because yeah. he came to my school and I was out sick. So oh, I never actually okay. got to talk to him, but I loved his books yeah. so much. Oh, that's uh, and you know, this is going to be another odd one. Uh, J.D. Fitzgerald, who wrote The Great Brain. That's another huge favorite oh. of mine. And the interplay between the two brothers. Uh, sure. I would love to ask him questions about those. And I know those are not classic answers. There, I could go no, on for hours. No, but that would that would be really interesting. I wouldn't yeah. eat dinner with any yeah. other. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Yeah. All right, 100%, A+. Plus. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, thanks for sitting down and talking with me. Thank you And for we having can't me. wait for the next story, Thieves. But me either. <laughs> and congrats, because this book is so much fun. Thank you. Great conversation with James Riley about his book called The Story Thieves. This is the book you want to jump into. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed. <laughs>